Hi guys, here's your video on section 5.2, verifying trig identities. So the previous section 5.1 was just simplifying using the fundamental identities. 5.2 is verifying trig identities. So the difference is, is I am now giving you um, an equation, so I know what this expression actually equals, as opposed to 5.1 where you were just simplifying the expression. Now there are guidelines for verifying identities, so these are the steps that you should follow um, to be able to verify the identities. Step number one is to work with only one side of the equation, and that is the left side of the equation. So you are never going to manipulate the right side, you're going to manipulate the left side, and your goal is to get that left side to equal the right side. Step number two is to look for opportunities to factor, add fractions, square a binomial, create a monomial denominator. So you're basically using all of your algebraic skills that you've gained throughout your many years of math um, to simplify your expressions as much as you can. Step number three is to look for opportunities to use the fundamental identities. So take a note of which functions are in the final expression that you want. So if your final expression has a sign in it, try to find some identities that have signs in them. Um, signs and cosines pair up well because of the Pythagorean identities. Um, secants and tangents pair together well, and cosecants and cotangents pair together well. Step number four says that if the preceding guidelines do not help at all, then try converting all the terms to sines and cosines. Because sines and cosines, those are your basic trig functions. So if you get stuck, you can go ahead and convert everything to sines and cosines and work from there. And step number five is super important. Always try something, okay? Even if making an attempt even making an attempt that leads to a dead end can provide some insight. So sometimes you might have to start completely over if you get stuck. And number six is to have fun with the trig puzzles. Okay, so here's our first problem. Uh, simplify the left side of the equation to the right side. So like I said, you're only working with one side of the equation, and that's the left side of the equation. So I have my formula sheet right next to me that has all of the identities that I can use to be able to simplify this expression. So I have tangent of theta, cosecant of theta, and secant of theta. Tangent of theta, I'm going to go ahead and write as sine over cosine. Again, I'm just trying something. And since I'm breaking down tangent in terms of sines and cosines, I might as well do the same thing with cosecant and secant. So cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine. And secant, which is on the bottom, is the same thing as uh, 1 over cosine. Now let's simplify what we have. If you look in this numerator over here, my signs are going to cancel. So that leaves me with 1 over cosine over 1 over cosine. And what happens when I have the same thing on top and the same thing on the bottom? It equals 1, which is exactly what our goal was. Our goal was to simplify that left side so that it equaled 1, which we did. Check mark. Smiley face. You're done. Identify, or. Er, Identity has been verified. All right, let's do another one. I have sine squared minus cotangent times tangent over cotangent times sine. So I'm going to start with this cotangent tangent. And the reason why I'm starting with that is because cotangent and tangent are reciprocals of each other. So what I can do is I can write this as sine squared theta minus cotangent is 1 over tangent over, and then if I look at my denominator, I have cotangent times a sine. So since sine is already there, I'm going to go ahead and get cotangent in terms of sine. Cotangent is, looking at my identities, cotangent is equal to co so cosine over sine. So it'll be very important that you have your list of identities out right next to you as you're working through these trig puzzles. 
Now let's see what I can simplify. So my tangents cancel up here, my sines cancel down here. See what I have left? I have sine squared theta minus 1 over cosine of theta. Now let's look at what our goal was. Our goal is to get a negative cosine of theta, so our final answer should only be in cosines. So I need to change the sine squared into something with cosines. So I have my Pythagorean identity that says that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If I were to manipulate that, which I'm going to go ahead and do on the side, my identity is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. I'm going to manipulate that and solve for sine squared. When I do that, I get 1 minus cosine squared. So now I can substitute my sine squared for 1 minus cosine squared, and hopefully that will take us places. So 1 minus cosine squared theta minus 1 over cosine. Well, the 1 minus 1 is going to cancel, and that leaves me with negative cosine squared over cosine. Well, cosine squared is just cosine times another cosine, so one of them is going to cancel, which leaves me with negative cosine of theta, which is exactly what we were looking for. Check mark. Smiley face, you're done. All right, for this next one, I have cosecant squared minus cotangent squared over tangent of x times cosine of x. And my goal is to get it to a cosecant of x. Excuse me. So I'm going to look at my identities, and I'm going to look for one that says that has a cosecant squared with a cotangent squared. Here's the one that I'm looking at. It says 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. And I'm going to manipulate that to get this, where it says cosecant squared of x minus cotangent squared. So to get that, I already have my cosecant squared over here. I want to get a minus cotangent squared, so I'm going to minus cotangent squared. So that leaves me with 1 equals cosecant squared of theta minus cotangent squared of theta. So now I can make a substitution. So my numerator is 1 over tangent of x, cosine of x. Now, tangent, I can change to sine over cosine. And I want to do that since this is already in terms of cosines. So tangent is sine of x over cosine of x times my cosine of x. And look at that. My cosine of x's are going to cancel. That leaves me with 1 over sine of x. But our goal was to get cosecant of x. But if you look at your identities, 1 over sine of x is equal to cosecant of x. Check mark. Smiley face. You're done. All right. The next one, sine of x plus cosine of x cotangent of x. So I already have my sine and my cosine. So let's go ahead and change cotangent in terms of sines and cosines. So I have sine of x plus cosine of x. Cotangent is cosine over sine. And here's the expression that I'm left with. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this fraction over here. So I have sine of x plus cosine times cosine is cosine squared over sine of x. Now, if you'll notice, our, our final answer is a single expression, cosecant of x. And right now, these two are separated, which means I need to add my fractions together. Sine is the same thing as sine over 1. So I'm going to go ahead and get a common denominator. I'm going to multiply my first fraction by sine of x. Okay. Now, when I do that, my new numerator is sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x all over sine of x. But what does sine squared plus cosine squared equal? It's a Pythagorean identity. It equals 1. So I have 1 over sine of x. Which, if I look at my goal, was to get cosecant, and 1 over sine of x is cosecant.
check mark, smiley face, you're done. By the way, this is one of my favorite lessons. I absolutely love verifying trig identities because I think they are a lot of fun um, since they're like little puzzles that you have to manipulate. All right, last one. So I have 1 over sine of x minus 1 over cosecant of x. So since I have sine of x on this side over here, I'm going to go ahead and change this in terms of sine of x's. So I have 1 over sine of x minus 1 over 1 over sine of x. Now this right here, 1 over 1 over sine of x just means to take the reciprocal of 1 over sine of x. So what I really have is 1 over sine of x over here minus, I can flip this over, so minus sine of x. Now I do have two expressions that are separated, so I do want to bring them together to see if I can simplify it. Sine of x is the same thing as sine of x over 1. And then I can get a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply the second fraction by sine of x. So now I have 1 minus sine squared x over sine. All right. All right, so I'm realizing that I made a mistake somewhere, and here's where my mistake was, right here. So I have 1 over sine of x minus sine of x, which I changed so I can combine it to a single fraction. But let's backtrack a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of erasing. So I went, I actually went too far, which is fine, because I recognize my, I recognized my mistake and started to backtrack a little bit. Okay, so let's look at what I have right now. So my final expression is cosecant of x minus sine of x. Well, I have my minus sine of x. So I have this part right here, so I just need the cosecant of x. But what is cosecant of x equal in terms of sine? Oh, it's 1 over sine. So 1 over sine of x is cosecant of x minus sine of x, which is exactly what we were looking for. Check mark, smiley face, you're done. All right, so that concludes your lesson for section 5.2. It is a lot of trial and error when you're working with these trig puzzles, but just try something, make a substitution, see if you can work through some of your algebraic skills to simplify further, and then again, your goal is to get that left side to equal the right side.